Freak shows and carnival sideshows have been around for a long time, and they've always been an opportunity for people to stare a little too much. You're probably familiar with acts like the Bearded Ladies and the Lobster Boys, but let's take a look at some of the stranger acts who relied on exhibiting themselves and their deformities to make a living. The Colorado Brothers Lazarus and Johannes Baptista Colorado were conjoined twins connected at the ribcage, but only Lazarus was fully formed. As one person at the time described them, Johannes Baptista grew right out of Lazarus' chest and had a well-formed head and face. He had a consciousness, too, and was often awake while Lazarus slept. There's still one of the few examples of living parasitic twins in history, Kuato notwithstanding. Open your mind. Martin Joe Lorello Often billed as the human owl, Martin Lorello arrived in the U.S. in 1921, and based on his nickname, you can probably guess he could turn his head around 180 degrees. Joe, well... Joe Ladello is one of the few people in the world who's actually seen what his back looks like without looking in a mirror. No one is really sure how he did it or what became of him, but there aren't any records of the guy after his last public appearance in 1945. Millie and Christine McCoy for some of the people who exhibited themselves in freak shows, it was a way to make a living. For conjoined twins Millie and Christine McCoy, it was a way out of slavery. According to the history blog 19th Century Disability, they ended up living with a family that taught them how to read, write, sing, dance, and play the piano. For more than 30 years, they exhibited themselves in freak shows across the U.S. and England and became so popular they even performed for Queen Victoria. They were able to retire by the end of the 1880s, return to their birthplace in North Carolina, and live out the rest of their lives in peace. Edward Bupri. By the time Edward Bupri stopped growing, he was 8 feet 3 inches tall. When he hit the freak show circuit, it wasn't just his size that impressed, but his strength, too. According to the Dictionary of Canadian Biography, Bupri was known for being able to pick up a horse and carry it over his shoulder, but the weirdness really started after the 23-year-old collapsed and passed away in 1904. His family couldn't pay for his burial, so the undertakers reportedly decided to put his body on display. It wasn't until 1990 that his body was finally returned to his family, where it got the burial he deserved. After all that, it makes you wonder who the freaks really were. The Wild Men of Borneo This pair of men were exhibited as feral savages brought to the civilized world from the darkest corners of Borneo, although that's about as far from the truth as you can get. They were brothers Hiram and Barney Davis, born in London and New York, who were sold to a promoter by their widowed mother. Research done by the Capital Area District Libraries found the brothers were mentally disabled and suffering from dwarfism that kept their heights at around 40 inches. The two brothers spent decades touring with various freak shows before retiring in 1903. Johnny Eck While his twin brother Robert was born 100% complete, Johnny Eck was born with no legs. He was, however, ridiculously agile, and at the age of 12, he and his brother joined the circus. Eck did everything from the tightrope and trapeze to juggling. The brothers also teamed up with a magician for a unique version of the saw body and half trick. The magician would put Johnny's twin Robert in a box to saw him in half, then Johnny would emerge from the box to chase his legs around the stage. Good times. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.